The biggest criticism that I hear of any kind of personal knowledge management system and using notes applications and things like building a second brain is that they quickly fill up with totally useless information, information that never gets looked at again, that just sits in your notes app gathering dust, taking up digital space. Now, is that something that's ever plagued you? Is your notes application full of stuff that you're never going to use? Well, if that's you, then the second half of code, collect, organize, distill, express, solves this problem. Distill and express, they're all about harnessing your notes and making them actually useful in your everyday work and everyday life. And Upnote has a ton of features that make this process really effective. So this is episode four of building a second brain in Upnote. Today we're looking at distilling, harnessing Upnote's editor's features to do that. This is all about finding the essence. What is the heart of the information that you have captured? What resonates with you? What are the key points? What are the main takeaways and the main applications for you? How is this going to impact you right now, day to day and into the future? And so that's the goal of this step to pull out of your notes all of the little nuggets that actually are going to make them useful to you in the future. But how do we do that? That's the question. And for this, building a second brain Tiago Forte system uses a process called progressive summarization. To be honest with you, there's many ways to skin this particular cat. And most of the ways that I've seen are actually really, really good. The second brain approach is progressive summarization, as I said, and it is perhaps one of the most simple and therefore effective ways of doing this that I've come across. The process of progressive summarization has three stages and it involves going through your notes a few times in a row with a slightly sharper focus each time you do. Key to this is the simplicity of the approach. Now we're not applying some technical criteria here to try and discern exactly what the author's intention is. No, we're simply asking the question, what resonates with me as I read this? It's worth pausing here to recognize that actually there are many, many ways that things might resonate with you. You might think that this is an important point in the book or the article or the post or the note that you've made. Maybe it's something that seems especially applicable to you. It might be something that reminds you of other stuff that you've read somewhere else. You might think it's just plain wrong. Perhaps you disagree with the point or the conclusion that's being made. Possibly the author is highlighting something directly and you want to make a note of it. Or it might just be something that you like or something that you find really interesting. There are many ways that something might resonate with you. This is really important in stage one. Go through the whole thing and just mark up in some way anything that resonates with you for any reason. The second run through focuses in a little bit more. You go through again, this time, only review the things that you marked up the first time round. This time, you're looking for the points that stand out the most, the things that seem most important, and critically, the things that are most applicable to you. And now the final run through, stage three, is where you aim to write a brief summary of your notes. This would be just a few lines to summarize those notes, to write out some key applications for yourself as well. This process, when you go through the whole of it, makes the notes so much more usable for you in the future. When you come back to them, you can see the things that are relevant, you can see the things that are important, and primarily, you can use your own summary to show you what the note is saying and how it's impacted you. And so when should you do this? That's the next question because we're all really busy. I don't know about you, but I am. To be honest, I don't have time to do this for every single note that I make, every single thing that I capture in the moment or shortly after I capture it. So what, when should this be done? Well, Tiago Forte agrees with me here. We don't need to do this 
for every single note that we make and we don't need to do it right away. You do it when it's useful to you. So here's my current approach. With things like articles or blog posts that I you know, might read on my phone or something like that, I generally do the first pass and highlight the points that resonate as I read them and then I'd leave it. Sometime later, maybe the article is useful for something that I'm working on or studying or thinking about. And then at that point, I would run through the article uh, using stages two or three. If I've highlighted the article in something like Raindrop or Omnivore, which are the Read It Later apps that I use, then I might copy those highlights into Upnote and work through stages two and three of progressive summarization there. With books, again, I tend to do the first pass as I read through them, highlighting on a digital book or underlining physical books in pencil as I go. And as I finish a chapter, then I'll generally spend about 10 to 15 minutes making notes on the chapter from those highlights or things that I've underlined. I generally create a task in my to-do system roughly a month or so after I finish the book. I'll try to set aside a time slot where I'll go through all of my chapter notes and I'll run through the three stages of progressive summarization on those chapter notes on the whole book and then try and finish off with a brief summary on the whole book and key takeaway points for me. That would normally take about an hour or so depending on the length of the book. And that way I have a summary of the book, a summary of the chapter and all of the key points and takeaways from each chapter and each book ready for me in the future. Most of my other notes, whatever they may be, I'll just leave them until they become relevant for my work or life in some way. And when they come up through the natural course of what's needed for my work, then I'll go through the summary process if I need to. Some notes are short enough that you don't actually need to summarize them. But the good thing is, is once you've done this for an article, for a blog post, for a book, or for notes in general, then it's done. And you have that summary sitting within your notes app to refer to whenever you need it in the future. So progressive summarization then in Upnote, how can you do this within this wonderful note taking application? So the first thing I want to say is check out this video up here where you can see a lot more of what you can do in Upnote's notes editor to give your notes visual impact. So when I do this process in Upnote, you can use colors or highlights to mark up what resonates with you on your first pass through the notes. I use uh, four different colors. I prefer personally at this stage to use a text color rather than highlights. Green, green I would use for something that I have a question mark over, whether it's because I want to look at it further or if it's because I want to research it or maybe because I disagree with it I would change the color of that to green. Purple would be something that I find personally interesting. Just to give you an idea a key point would be something that I would highlight in blue and a key application would be something that I would highlight in red. Uh, well, I would change the color to red. Now, the easiest way to do this in Upnote, although it does take a little bit of time investment, is to learn these uh, keyboard, the keyboard shortcuts. So you can see here, text color is on a Mac, it's command option one to eight. And then when you click this, you can see the colors one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for example, if I wanted to turn this red, command option one, turns it red. Because I only use four colors, I know that I need one, four, five, and seven. So learn the keyboard shortcuts, and that is the quickest way. If you wanna use highlights, you can do the same with highlights as well, but it's a little bit more clunky with the keyboard shortcut. Command, Option, Shift, one to eight. So I would go through and I would mark up the note. So there you go, I've done that in quick time so you can see the different ways in which you might mark up your note on the first pass. And then you come to the second pass. Now this is where you mark up further. So I would highlight here, 
key things. And generally here, I just use a blue highlight for everything that I think is really key. In UpNote, the blue seems to work best in highlighting all of the colors. But I also do three other things here. Anything that is really significant, or maybe a quote that I wanna remember and have really stand out, I'll put it in a quote box. Here, I might put all of that uh, in a quote box. And let's just make it blue because it's a key point. I might write a few notes to myself, and to do that I use code snippets. And I would use a slash command, put in a code snippet. I do this anyway note to self, code snippets. And then the last thing I will do is if there's any key words in there or key topics, then I might convert those to tags or perhaps add a few tags down at the bottom of the note. For example, respiratory health might be something. So I would select that, right click on it, create a new tag, respiratory health. There you go, new tag created. And then down at the bottom, I would normally put in a divider. Let's think of a tag exercise. The last pass is where I would go through and I would write my summary and I will do that in a collapsible section that I will put in the bottom just above the tags. Uh, collapsible summary. Sometimes I might write it out in a in a written form, other times I might use bullet points and then at the end I would put in a little mini heading, key applications and then I'll just list them. And obviously I can hide this. It's in a collapsible section, so it's distinct and separate from the core of the note, but it's there as and when I need it. And if I wanted to, I can even put in the title of the note. So if I copy the link to the section, then if I wanted to, in another note somewhere else, bring in this summary, I can just put in that summary, sitting is the new smoking. If I click on that, it'll take me to this collapsible section. And so that's how you actually work with your notes to make them useful for you in the future. How you distill, how you summarize the notes that you make in UpNote as you build your second brain there. And next time, we're gonna think about how to actually use those notes now you've made them useful. So if you found this video valuable, then please do hit the, the like button down below, there. Please do subscribe to the channel, which is also here as well, and share this video with anyone else who might find it useful. Check out these other videos that are available here, and thank you very much for watching.